grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus shares in this gospel passage from Matthew so many different ways of understanding just how God is at work in the world. Jesus says that God is at work in hidden, almost insignificant, and yet very powerful ways. As we learn from his comparison of the kingdom to a mustard seed, a seed that grows like a weed spreading through farm fields and gardens until it takes over just about everything. And here in this part of Matthew's gospel, Jesus says that there's nothing more important than God's presence in our lives. He says the kingdom is like a valuable pearl or a buried treasure, something that seems so small like a pearl or hidden like that buried treasure, but whose existence changes everything for the person who knows that it's there. We know that God is present with all of God's love and grace, whether we're aware of that presence or not. God doesn't disappear when we're not paying attention. God is always there, just like the stars are still in their places, even when the sun's light makes them impossible to see. And the good news that Paul shares with us in his letter to the Romans is that God is always more than ready and willing to communicate with us, to be there for us. Paul invites us to remember that and to tap into the reality of God's presence through prayer. We don't all pray the same way. As many people as there are or have ever been in the world, there are that many different ways to pray. I love to hear kids pray, especially when they begin to think or before they begin to think that there might be a right way or a wrong way to pray. Hopefully kids and grown-ups too can think of prayer as a loving and safe conversation with a wiser person, capital P, who loves us unconditionally, even just resting in silence in the presence of the one who loves us is prayer. When kids, when kids try to learn formal prayers, like the Lord's Prayer, they can sometimes rewrite them in creative ways. A three-year-old was struggling to learn the Lord's Prayer and was overheard saying, Our Father, who does art in heaven, Harold is his name. Amen. Who knew that God's first name was Harold? And of course God does art in heaven. That makes perfect sense to me. A slightly older child made it most of the way through the Lord's Prayer, but then stumbled over the word trespasses. He said, forgive us our trash baskets, as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. There's wisdom in that for sure. We make prayer a lot more complicated than it has to be. Some mystics think of breathing as prayer. When God breathed into Adam to give him life, Adam breathed in what Hebrews book of Genesis, what the Hebrew book of Genesis calls God's ruach. That word means breath and wind and spirit. So maybe our breath is a gift of God's spirit. And when we take in and give back this breath, we are praying. When we try to pronounce God's holy name, those four Hebrew letters that mean I am, those sounds sound like a breath. Christians have a long tradition of praying a breath prayer, which is very simple. When you breathe in, you say the name Jesus or Jesus Christ, Son of God. Jesus Christ, Son of God. And then when you breathe out, you say, have mercy on me. You can repeat this over and over, and it has a calming effect. Jesus, have mercy on me. Prayer can be as simple as breathing in and out, and you're aware that your breath is a gift of God. Paul begins this section in his letter to the Romans, that is our second lesson, by saying that we do not pray as we ought. Paul knows that there is a depth of resources in prayer <clears throat> that we probably aren't tapping into. Prayer is as simple as breathing, but it's also something we can learn and get more skilled at throughout our lives. The way we gain strength and skill in this spiritual discipline is by doing through practice. So I'd like to invite you to try two things during this coming week, or better yet, 
through the rest of July and all of August. Paul says in his first letter to the Thessalonians that we should pray without ceasing. We can become more and more aware that God's presence always surrounds us, and we can learn to tune in to God's presence. You know how you're sometimes on the phone with someone and they think they've hung up, but they didn't push the button down all the way. And you can still hear the sounds of their life, maybe a conversation they're having with someone in the room with them, but they don't realize that you are still listening. God is like a dear friend holding a phone with an open phone line, listening in on all the background noises of our lives, waiting for us to realize that we're still on an open line with God. God who's waiting to say, oh, hello, you are still there. I love you. This week or this coming month, if you're willing to try it, let yourself be aware of your breathing. When you breathe in, know that you breathe in the presence and power of the Spirit of God. Breathe in God's peace. Breathe in God's way of seeing the world. And when you breathe out, give God whatever it is that you're thinking about at the moment, whatever you're worried about. Let God reign over all of that. Trade your worries and fears for God's peace. Or if you're feeling happy about something, give God thanks and praise for that gift as you exhale. The other thing that I challenge you to try, if you don't already do this, is to make an appointment with God. Like you might make an appointment with a friend or family member to call them at the same time every day. However much time you have, make a pact with yourself and God to try to spend that time, even if it's just five minutes. Open your Bible and read a few verses very slowly, listening for whatever God might share with you through those words. If you're not sure where to open your Bible, start with the Gospel of John or one of Paul's letters or the Psalms. You could keep a pen and a little notebook or piece of paper in that quiet place and write down any thoughts that God shares with you. Even marathon runners begin their training with just a few steps, and you'll be amazed at how quickly this practice will become a source of life for you, something you will look forward to. God created us to be in communication with God. We need this open line in order to live the life for which we were created. You were created for nothing less than to be an heir of Christ, Paul says. You are created for nothing less than to be an incarnate expression of the love of God. We were born with our lungs empty, craving to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the air of this world. So even now, as our world is filled with chaos and pain, breathe. Especially now, breathe. Breathe in, Jesus, Son of God. Breathe out, have mercy on me. And then listen. Listen to what God longs to say to you. And then you will know just how it is that God is calling you to be God's love incarnate, to be God's love in action. Amen.